hey, hey. Welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am Kristen Ostrander. And I am Amy Fearman, and we are super excited to have you here this week. This is a topic that we absolutely love because, guys, this is something that we've made the transition to, to get away from cardboard and packing tape, and we want to be able to help you make the transition that we've made. So we are going to talk about a lot of the parts and pieces that have allowed us to make that transition. Absolutely. And we're just so excited that you're here and that you want to learn more because, you know, what's better than being hands off in your Amazon business? Now, we do not, disclaimer right up front, we are not talking about drop shipping. Okay. So if that's why you came, you're in the wrong place. We are talking about a legitimate way to run your Amazon business and be hands off. And when we mean hands off, that means um, doing kind of what I did today, which was an anomaly of, you know, my son is very ill and we had to go spend all day at the ER. And of course, there's always waiting and waiting and waiting. But guess what? I just picked up my laptop and business as usual. It's just from a different location. And that's the kind of stuff we're offering to you guys to know the process by which you can do that and be able to take care of business no matter where you're located without worrying about, oh my gosh, I have to ship all these orders today. And oh my gosh, you know, all that I'm, getting, I'm receiving a shipment or a pallet's going to be dropped off and I have to be present. You don't have to go it that way. And we want to be able to give you some keys in order to, um, unlock your hands off Amazon business. If you have other questions that aren't pertinent to tonight's show, bring them to the Facebook group, head over to mommyincome.com slash join us with the code word stop shipping and we will let you into the group and ask those questions there. Now we have an exciting announcement to make tonight because today we have opened registration for our 2019 Confident Wholesale Bundlers Workshops. Yes, that, I said workshops. Yes, workshops. We're so excited. Last year we were able to teach three workshops in three different locations and we absolutely loved it. And we feel like every person that has come to those workshops has become a friend and someone that we can talk to and help on their, on their course. And that's one of the reasons we love our face-to-face -face workshops is because we get to meet you. You know, it's interesting how you see this, like we're here every week and you see our faces and we're talking to you and teaching you and conversating with you, but you get to see us, but we never get to meet you. We never get to meet you guys. And this is one of the opportunities that we take every year to meet people and help them right where they are. We get, we roll up our sleeves, we get our hands dirty, we get with you guys and we really help you become a confident bundler. A lot of people take wholesale bundles as class and they're like, I still need just a little bit of extra, a little bit of, you know, level up, one up your game. And this is the perfect opportunity to get with us and roll up your sleeves and just take some action. And guys, this is a true workshop. We are not going to be up there lecturing at you all day. We actually get down in the trenches with you and build bundles from the ground up. So if you want to become a wholesale bundler, we invite you to head over to mommyincome.com slash workout, workout, workout. Wow, where did that come <laughs> not from? Not workout. No workout. Mommyincome.com slash workshop. And you can snag the information you need about that. We're talking about... Becoming a confident wholesale bundler and saving yourself some of the headaches that we have gone through on our confident wholesale bundler journey. We're not shy about talking about wholesale bundles, why they work and why they should be part of your business. And so we want to bring you alongside us and work with you to become that confident wholesale bundler. And already, like we are, we're just like this topic goes right into wholesale bundling. Why? Because we're able to go through wholesale bundling exactly how we do it now. Hands off, hands off, hands off means we're not taping up boxes. We're not receiving pallets. We're not receiving shipments. We're not peeling stickers off things and sending them in on our own. We are literally um, hands off when it comes to that. Now, of course, we're not going to ever tell you that this is like, Hey, you know, we're, we're, you know, making it rain with all of our hundos and we're sitting on the beach somewhere where someone else is running our business. Uh, that will be later on. That will happen, but later on. But right now we're talking about as hands off as we can be. So we're making our own bundles. We're going through catalogs and going to trade shows and picking the products that we want to put together and then we're handing it off hence the hands off to other people to help us with building listings with building up our back end which with receiving of pallets and shipments and bundling of items and sending them to amazon and all that kind of stuff so we're going to go through some of that and i i'm just super excited about this topic because this is literally you guys this is what we live and breathe and move every single day we're not teaching you this so far removed that like we don't do this stuff anymore we practice all this stuff 
every single day. And all we do is just pass it on to you. So get your pens and paper ready because you're going to take a lot of notes. If you want to be where we are, this is the show for you. It is about hustle. It's about taking that next step and we want to help you jump into it. First question I have for each and every one of you is what is the bottleneck in your business? We all have them. Every single one of us, Kristen and I still have bottlenecks in our business. And that is your first step to taking that step to the next level in your business. And when we say bottleneck, um, for those of you guys that just can't visualize, I'm a visual person. So it's literally like flip a wine bottle, <laughs> upside down wine bottle, cut the top off and then start pouring something really heavy in the top. And the bottleneck is where it all bottles up and then it starts to back, backlog and back and overflow and then you've got this big hot mess. We all have those in our business, okay? That is the, just the visualization of the fact that things are not flowing smoothly and correctly as they should through that bottleneck. What is causing you the most stress? Taking up the most time in order to become more hands off in your business, you need to know these things. So literally take a minute and just think about what is the biggest thing that takes the most time causes me the most stress and literally is stopping up the cogs in the wheel and preventing it from turning. I'm going to share my bottleneck last week. I was my own bottleneck because guess what happened? I have a list of 16 listings. All of my holiday information came in, all of it. <laughs> all of my holiday inventory came in and I had listings that I needed to create. And Kristen will tell you that I was fighting it with every... I every inch of my being to get this done. It was this giant frog. And because it was this list, it was eating away at me. Um, and so that bottleneck, that listing creation. Okay. So I learned from that. Don't ever have 25 listings that you have to create in the span of 10 days by yourself. No, that is really bad. And what Amy has learned and what we, you know, do you guys know that we constantly coach each other? That's what we do. We're like constant, like I'm coaching her. She's coaching me. Okay, do this. Don't do that. Why is your Dropbox full? We have to fix that. You know, and I'm like, why do you have 25 listings to do in one sitting? Um, I will not lie. At this time of year, um, we all have a lot of listings to do because it's be real. It's Q4. And I have my own checklist over here that I have been abandoned. Yeah. It's like all the listings that we have to do. Pages of them. But you know what? They're checked off. You see that? Checked off. Loving it. Um, because we challenge each other. Now, that's the bottleneck of your business and the great thing about that is in order to to get rid of that bottle that can open it up so that it flows more freely you've got to find the leaks every business has a hole in their bucket and where the money is draining from because if your time is draining from something something's not getting done the money is draining out of the leaky holes you've got to plug the leaky bucket in order to know what that is you've got to examine you have to sit down and examine where the leaks are yeah and that I mean that's as simple as if I've got all these listings, I've got inventory in the warehouse, and guess what? If it doesn't have a listing, it doesn't get set to Amazon, it doesn't get sold. So that is creating those listings is plugging that hole. Sometimes, guys, this takes a simple sitting down and going through your every single one of your processes. I guarantee you, every single business, no matter how buttoned up you think you are, has holes in it. Target has holes. Apple has holes. They all have holes. And part of it is spending time to look at all of your systems and processes and the way that you do things to find where you're wasting time, where you're wasting money. How many of you have subscriptions that you don't use? There's a hole in your bucket right there. There is a big fat hole in your bucket. If you are paying for something, some service that you're not using on a regular basis, plug that hole. That's an easy one to plug. And you know what? Let, let me take the fear out of you right now. Any service that you sign up for, most, okay, I can't say disclaimer, not every single thing, most of the things. If you have Jungle Scout and you're not using it right now, plug the hole and you can always go back to Jungle Scout and re-sign up. Is that even a thing? Re-sign up, whatever that is. You can go back and you can sign up again if you cancel your membership. If you cancel your, your subscription to Merchant Words, which, you know, $9, how can you resist that? But whatever it is, Tactical Arbitrage or some of these other services or things that you're not using, plug the hole. Don't have FOMO. Don't worry that you're going to miss out on something if you're not using it. Plug the hole. 
And then you have more money to put towards something you're actually using. Analyze, what am I using on a regular basis? What are my go-to resource tools that I'm constantly using? Like you guys, I would not live without Inventory Lab right now. I just won't. It's a place where I can go. I can create a shipment really easily if I want to. I can look at all my profit and loss. I can see what's coming in. I can sort by vendor and see which one is the most profitable based on what I input in my system. I love that. And I, and, and I, love, I love Inventory Lab because it's like color-coded charts and pie charts and I, I, I speak chart. I like to look at things in like a chart format and be like, oh look, this is 90% blue. That's where you're spending the most money and here's this little skinny thing. You know, I, I love to do that. And one of the ways that you can plug the holes in your bucket is to get a raise. Who wants a raise? Can I get an amen? Anybody? Anybody want to raise? I certainly want to raise. And this is my favorite way to get a raise. Ready? All right. Hold on. <laughs> I want to bring up the image so that people can actually see this before you okay. fly through it because Kristen will fly through this. But we really want to show you guys how to make some more money. Hold on. Where'd it go? Who doesn't want to make more money? I think we all do. And so here's the slide. So if you're not looking at this time or podcast listeners, you're going to have to go watch the replay on YouTube because this is our, um, this is our, our sheet here. And this is what I want to tell you. So if you can make a bundle in 10 minutes at $8 a profit, that's eight bundles times $8. That's $48 an hour you're making. Okay. So you're making your $48 an hour because you can make 10 bundles or, you know, six bundles in, in 10 minutes. Okay. $48 an hour, right? Um, if you hire somebody to pack and ship for your $10 an hour, you, you hire them for $10 an hour and they can do the same amount of bundles that you can in that hour. You just made $38 an hour for doing nothing. Somebody else is doing that now. You could literally watch Netflix and make $38 an hour or you and someone can pack and ship the same time, twice the money. So now you're packaging 12 bundles at $8 an hour. That is $96 minus the $10 that you just paid someone else. You just made $86 an hour. So you helped yourself, but now you just got a raise. You just got a raise. Time is worth more than money every single day. Time is worth more than money. So you need to make sure that you're doing that so that you can actually you know, just, just think about it for a minute. Any bundle that you're doing, think about that, that format and think, what can I do to give myself a raise if I hire $10 an hour? The reality is so many people get stuck in the, I can't hire because I can't afford to. When you get to a certain point in your business, you can't afford not to, guys. And it's as simple as sitting down and doing the math like we're showing you here. If you are making that kind of money on a bundle, I remember when I would go through and make competitions with my prep team and I try to see how many bundles we could get through in an hour because all of a sudden we were making even more progress and making even more money by getting more done in an hour. And I, I understand the block, the mental block. I can't spend money to make money. Actually, it is the best way to grow your business because all of a sudden you are two times in yourself. You just became, you have an hour that you can either prep or you can find new inventory while somebody else is still earning you $38 an hour. I, I would love for someone else to earn me $38 so an hour. So you're getting paid to do retail arbitrage. You are getting paid to go through wholesale catalogs. Think about it that way is freeing yourself from the confines of packing and shipping and all of that type of stuff. It can be outsourced. And you know what? It's really not that hard when it comes to that. We're not going to spend a ton of time on how to train and hire someone because we do have a good resource for that. We also have some great videos on our YouTube channel. Um, so, it, you know, we can belabor that later on as far as how you kind of go through that. What, what are things that we can hire out? We've done whole shows on this, but this is one of the reasons why we're talking about being hands off in your business, because if you can create a process that you can follow, you can create a process, we call it the 10 year old process, okay? So it's not really for 10 year olds, but if you can simplify steps down to 10 year old status, like literally pick up product A, do this to product A, move it to column B, do this again, do it like this until it's all done. Then you take these and you, whatever your assembly line is of starting to do those things, whether it's research, whether it's packing and shipping, if you can 
break it down step by step and then have somebody else like a 10 year old <laughs> follow the process, then you'll find out where the holes are. And while you're documenting the process, you'll find out where the holes are. And then you can say, okay, I missed this step. We need to go back and write that back into the policy. Guys, this is all about letting go of control. And I, I completely understand the stuck stock stocking point. Wow. The stopping point <laughs> that that can be for people. I watched Kristen struggle with hiring her first person a couple of years ago to make that move to get things off of her plate. We both go back and forth with this. There'll be depending on what we're trying to hire, we get these stuck points. So we totally understand that letting go of things. I know that some people have struggled to let go of their inventory and only want to merchant fulfill on Amazon because they don't want Amazon to take control of their inventory. You have to let go. In, if I was still running my Amazon business, all merchant fulfilled, doing the volume I am right now, <laughs> I would be insane. You'd have to put me in a straight jacket because I'd be working 24 hours a day. I couldn't handle all of the things the packing, the shipping, the finding of inventory, all of the things. So letting go and becoming okay with letting go. And sometimes that's as simple as being okay with how your husband does the dishes and outsourcing. Ooh, she just said that out loud. Ladies. I did. Sometimes it's, it's, sometimes it's business related, but sometimes you free up your time by being okay with somebody else in your family taking on one of the things that you normally do, not the way you would do it, but letting them take it on so that you can focus on what you need to focus on in your business. That could not be more true, you guys. You know, sometimes we have to let go of that control because you know what? If you want to be a CEO of a company, you want your company to be bigger. You're a company, by the way. Did you know that? Selling on Amazon. Don't just call it my, my little Amazon business. I'm just an Amazon seller. No, you're not. You're an entrepreneur. But you're also janitor and CEO and everything in between. And until you can hire those things out and let go of that, first of all, your employee is going to be as good as you teach them. Somebody's brand new and they've never done anything. And you put an ad in the paper and you say, this is the things that I want add in the paper, whatever it is. There's probably an app for that, you know, but whatever it is that you're using to do that, they're going to do exactly what you tell them. So if you tell them, do this, do this, do this, do this, that's how they're going to do it. And unless they're super smart, which is the people you want to keep, then they're going to figure out a better way or a different way and say, hey, Amy, I found that, that I can do this this way and I can do it much faster. Great. Then you give them a raise because you don't want them to go somewhere because that means that they're, you know, forward thinking and they're helpful. So, you know, thinking about those things, you're going to have to let go. Look, Jeff Bezos cannot run Amazon by himself. He, he did for a time in his garage and started Amazon. But once he got bigger, he had to hire people. If you want a, even a bigger, you don't have to make millions of dollars, but if you want a bigger empire than you have, you're going to have to start hiring and training people to fulfill the things that you can't do all of. So these are things like ordering online. These are things like wholesale orders, emails, things like Alibaba, direct private label. These are things that you can hire someone else to do. Let go of the control and let somebody else take over that piece. I know that one of the biggest pieces that Chris and I have handed off in our business is taking the prep and shipping. While we used to have teams internally, we have taken the management and all of that out of our hands and handed it off to a prep center so that they are handling the managing of the team, the sick days, the I don't show up for works, the inventory damage, and all of the things that come along with processing inventory that we used to have to do in-house so that we were involved with all of the things. And now we've taken that step out of that piece of it. Yes, there is still communication so that they know what they're processing and how they're processing it, but I'm on the phone having conversations maybe 45 minutes to an hour a week. Whereas it used to be four to five days a week in my home for six to eight hours a day. Can I tell you how hard it is to get other things done when you have a processing team behind you? It's great that they're talking. It's great that they're communicating. It's great that they're getting it done, but my brain can't work when you're doing that. And it's baby steps, you guys. You know, the things that we're doing, we're teaching you, and te but it didn't happen overnight. We started with one person to help. It used to be a friend of mine before it was me. It was, we were doing retail arbitrage and a friend of mine, we're like, we just need some extra hands on deck here. And she would come once or twice a week and she'd get her pay and she'd help us 
pack and prep and ship and she could Tetris a box like you wouldn't believe. Like she was so spatially related and we loved having her around. Plus it was just fun. But then it was also chat. You couldn't do anything else except that because that was what was going on. And eventually you get to a point in your business where you can't handle the volume anymore. And that's good if you want to just stay there and that's awesome. But if you want to grow, you want to one up your business and you want to start being hands off, you're going to have to learn how to train and trust and let things go. Now, before you, you know, we're going to talk about prep centers because that's one of the things that has allowed us to be hands off. About a year and a half, almost a little, what was it, a year and a half, almost two years? Gosh, has it been that long? That literally we were, you know, you can't see it. I always point to my office behind me that you can't see behind this blue backdrop. But you go back you, and watch really, really old shows. You were literally <laughs> like receiving boxes every single day. And because we don't have a covered port, we have a small covered porch like the size of the front door. Um, UPS and FedEx would come and deliver not only boxes, but literally one time I drove up and they someone dropped a pallet in my driveway and didn't even tell me. They literally dropped the pallet right in front of where I need to pull in to get into the garage and didn't even, I didn't even know they were coming. I was like, oh, there's a pallet here. And I'm glad it's not raining. Um, so they literally, you know, things like that were receiving. We're like, we've got to stop this. My house isn't big enough to support this kind of volume of business. So we started talking about prep centers and, um, you know, Nathan actually, Nathan is, is a, Nathan and Bridget and his team and their family are the ones that own myprepcenter.com. That is who Amy and I use. Um, don't, when we say our prep center, my prep center, that's actually the name of it, myprepcenter.com. And Nathan and Bridget I do a fantastic job there. And their son, Noah, he's fantastic too. Um, they, do, they do a fantastic job. He's the one that approached me. And he was a former Amazon seller. And he was like, look, I really think there's a big need for a prep center around here. Can I prep your stuff? <laughs> I believe it or not, I blew him off the first time he called me. I was like, what is this cr cracker doing to me right now? I don't know who this guy is. I mean, I kind of knew him. We met one time at a, at a local meetup, but then I'm like, are you serious? But he was persistent. And he's like, hey, about that inventory, I'd really like to corner the bundle marketplace and make it affordable for people. Can I bundle your inventory for free for a month to see if we can actually make this thing profitable? And I was like, you had me at free. <laughs> I'm going to be straight up real. But he was like, we will prep your inventory for free for a month. I was like, where do I sign? <laughs> so we talked and we talked and we talked and we figured this stuff out and he tried it for a month and then we talked again and we figured out how to make bundles profitable for both them and people sending in bundles. And they were like, if we can get this thing off the ground, so many people are going to be helped by it. And that's how we came to my prep center. And I have not really had inventory. Occasionally we get sample products and stuff here so we can test it out, take pictures, things like that. But for the most part, they get 99.9% .9 of our inventory at my prep center. Um, and they are a fantastic team. If you are interested in actually, we interviewed Nathan last year so you can see and understand um, where he comes from and his ideas and everything. Um, I will post a link down below in the chat so that you guys can go and watch that video because I think that getting to know the person behind your prep center is essential to being able to have a successful relationship. Um, now, part of what we want to offer you guys tonight is a bunch of questions that we have put together to help you find a prep center that fits you. It may be that you, whatever your vendors are not close to Michigan and trying to ship cross country doesn't make sense for you. So you're looking for a vendor that's somewhere else or you're doing retail arbitrage or online arbitrage and you're looking for something that's in a tax-free state so you're not paying taxes. Whatever works for you, we've put together a list of questions to ask your prep center. Guys, this is not a just pick somebody out of a hat and go with them. There's a lot of questions you wanna ask because this is your business and we want to make sure that you have the tools that you need to be able to make the decisions that you need that are best for your business. So if you go to mommyincome.com slash prep now, that'll give you access to the questionnaire. We wanted to give you access to that. It talks about the questions related to fees, shipping and receiving, communication, which guys, communication is key in anything in business, but especially when you're dealing with a prep center. You want somebody who's going to be responsive when you have issues, when you have questions, when you have just something that you need to get off your chest, when there's problems that arise, you want them to be there to have that conversation with you, even when it's the middle of Q4. Because guess what, guys? Inventory lab goes down. 
or your shipment gets delayed. And there's so many things that you need to be able to have that communication. Problem resolution is a big part of this. So we've put those questions together for you and I'll give you a couple of examples that are on there. Understanding do they do bundles and what their fees are for bundles? That's a huge one to ask. Nathan has made it affordable for us to be able to do bundles with him. Whereas there are some prep centers out there that you can tell don't want to cater to bundlers because they want to charge you $2 an item in a bundle. And guys, you know, if you're, char if you're doing two to three, four, six items in a bundle, you just said bye-bye to your profit if they're processing that for you. You better be, you better be selling diamond rings or something with that. <laughs> You know, that, that's one of the things is that you have to understand that communication is key and asking these questions. Remember, your prep center works for you. So, and, and by the way, there is actually no disclaimer here. Like we don't get kickbacks from the prep center. We are not an affiliate. We just love them. We use them and we love them. Make sure you just say, hey, you know, mommy income sent us over here. Um, but we don't get kickbacks. We don't have an affiliate relationship. We just have a personal relationship. We love how they do business. We love that they're honest. We love that they're commu they're communicative. Like literally I have their personal cell phone numbers that I can call them and be like, Hey, something happened over here. Or this FedEx number was misdelivered. And there's been, there's always problems. There's going to be problems when you deal with any human being in any system like FedEx or UPS or any other thing or Amazon. <laughs> So with that being said, the communication is key. So you have to ask some of those things. Ask, you know, and you got to, you guys got to go to um, mommyincome.com slash prep now to get your, you know, question and answer sheet here so that you don't have to write all these down because we're not going to belabor every single one of them, but there are very important things to ask your prep center. Listen, you guys, using a prep center, using a place like this, again, Amy has already said it, but we're going to say it again. One of the things that a lot of people have said, oh, well, I know I get that big. I'm just going to get a warehouse of my own and I'm going to hire my own team. And trust me, I, you know me and you know my math, right? And so I literally did this side by side. While Nathan, two years ago, was prepping my stuff for free for that month, I was like, I wonder how, would it, how much it would cost to get a warehouse and to rent some space and to get a team and see if we could prep this first. I mean, could I save myself some money here? Because I know how many units I'm sending in and at this fee, it's going to cost this much. And I'm like, but you know what I'm paying for with that? I'm paying for no headaches. I didn't have to hire or fire anybody. I don't have to carry liability insurance. I don't have to pay payroll on these people. I don't have to pay insurance on the building I'm renting. I don't have to pay utilities or heat on the warehouse that I don't own. Um, I can literally just pay per unit to have their company take care of my inventory. There and the was a time. was so huge to me that I was like, this is worth it to me. There was a time in that math process that Kristen did that she was considering putting a pole barn on her property to be a warehouse so that she could figure out how to make that happen. I can only imagine what that would have turned into if you had stopped using it as a prep facility and all the things that would have ended up in it. I am so glad that I didn't do that. I mean, mathematically at one point it was close, but then we projected growth. And then because I hired a prep center, I was able to order more product because I didn't have to be here to receive it. When companies said we can only ship pallets and this order you want to place is going to be four pallets. I'm like, where am I going to put four pallets? I can process maybe two pallets, but four, I do not have the space for that, nor do I want to live amongst pallets and cardboard. And we just had to draw the line. So when you want to get bigger, you're going to have to do that and ask yourself what it's worth. Do you want to hire and fire? Do you want to carry liability insurance on three or four different people working at your home or your warehouse? And you know, you want to, because all because you're a control freak. No, I am willing to let go. No, we didn't let go all at once. We didn't like jump off the cliff without a parachute. We were like, you know, we, we jump off, we, we waded into the kiddie pool first. Like, that's what we're saying here. You don't jump all in with both feet. We wade into the kiddie pool and see if this is right for you. And if it's starting to really work, then great, do it. But you've got to be able to ask your prep center questions about, how about problem resolution? Yeah, do you have, uh, talking about inventory shrinkage, do they end up with a um, hundred of one thing when they should have a hundred of one thing plus a hundred of another thing that's supposed to go together and one part's missing? for your bundle. When you're bundling, having all of the components is essential. If you don't have the components, guess what? You can't ship them in because you can't actually create the bundle. So being on top of and paying attention to that, understanding how they deal with that. How do they deal with damaged inventory as it comes in? 
these are all things that you're going to have to ask your prep center. Again, um, you know, don't write all this stuff down. Go to mommyincome.com slash prep now and get the, your, um, top questions to ask your prep center cheat sheet and you'll have all these there it is shipping and receiving you know one of the big things we we wanted to work with nathan on was like can you receive and package pallets so it's not just receiving of pallets but can you palletize my items and does it make financial sense to do that so that they can do that you know do they have a loading dock or do they you know how long does it take how can i how long can i expect my inventory to turn around from the time you receive it to the time it ships in do you do bundles? Is it extra cost? A lot of these places, what about storage? Okay, this is something a lot of people don't think of. We're talking bundles, right? So Amy and I know exactly what this looks like. So you, you order something and your company doesn't tell you that one out of the three or four items is back ordered for two months. Is your prep center going to charge you a storage fee to store the three out of the four components because the one's back ordered for literally two months? Something you have no control over. They've already shipped out some and they're like, oh yeah, this one thing, it's not coming in for a while. Does your company have a place to store that and will they be charging you for that? Because at that point you're starting to eat away at your profit. So you want to ask them, how much cubic feet do I have in storage before you start charging me? You know, these are all things you want to consider. Do you have a minimum number of units that I have to send in to continue to be a client of yours? All relative information. Yeah. And we want to make sure that you guys have everything that you need to be successful with outsourcing. And outsourcing to a prep center feels like a ginormous step. But as Kristen said, you do not need to do it all at once. Pick one vendor, pick one online arbitrage that you're doing. Make sure you know your prep center's minimums and say, hey, I want to test you out. What is the process and how much do I need to send in to do a test run with you? See how the process all works. That is a huge important step to all this. You, you can ask for references. You can do all of those things just to really understand how they work and if it's going to work for you. Um, and there are parts and pieces to the process and getting yourself accustomed and adjusted to how you do things when you switch over to a prep center. Switching over 100%, we know people who've never touched their inventory at all in their Amazon business. They've been prep center from day one. And you can 100% build an Amazon business with zero touching of your inventory and not do drop shipping. And let me tell you one other thing that's really good for wholesale bundlers when it comes to prep centers especially if you're a work at home business, try getting an account with certain um, companies that won't deliver residentially. So yeah, we found a workaround at first. You know, we both have boxes at UPS stores that we have rented because back in the day, um, we didn't have a prep center, but we really wanted the wholesale accounts. And they said, I'm sorry, your, your address is residential. We don't ship residential. We only ship commercial. We're like, great, I'll give you another address next week. And so we both got PO boxes um, at the local UPS pack store or whatever. And now we have a commercial address and they Google earth you. So you cannot pretend that your address is commercial. They will look <laughs> you up. Google earth. You cannot hide from Google earth. They will find you. <laughs> I haven't had one. I haven't had one vendor come back to me and say, well, you said the name of your store is this, but when we looked at the actual address, it says that this is such and such pack and ship. And I said, yeah, that's where my commercial address and delivery address is, but you know, that it's, it's a multiple address unit or whatever. And so, because they literally like Google earth that are looked at, <laughs> they look stuff. at the front of the store and know what it is. I'm telling you, you can't hide from them. They know the loopholes, but if you have a prep center, it is hundred percent a commercial address. It is a warehouse and most, uh, most vendors will ship to a warehouse. So you say, this is my prep center a warehouse. This is where all my stuff is warehoused. And they're like they understand that lingo and so they're like sure yeah you're in you know um so it's one of the ways that you can say okay if wholesalers are saying no to you or people have said no to you because of your address using a prep center takes care of business for you so it's like oh yeah we're a, we're a warehouse we'll receive your stuff problem solved yes and part of being a confident wholesale bundler is being able to have a way to process those bundle bundles and send them out easily. I know that I, I watch a number of our students get stuck on the, well, now I have all these bundle ideas and I don't know what to do all, with all of them because I can't imagine processing them all myself. And one of the things that we encourage our workshop attendees to do is go to that prep center level because you're ready for it. If you're gonna do bundles and you wanna grow and scale bundle, bundles, then being able to have somebody else process those for you is a huge step in the right direction. 
And then there's steps to be hands off after that. The last prep center question that you need to ask yourself and them is how well do they know Seller Central? Do they actually know Amazon as well as you do? I mean, this is a big deal because we actually had a, a run in with a specific prep center that we won't name that actually had no idea how to do Amazon. Like, I, we knew more Amazon speak than I did, than they did. I was like, well, what about this? And how do you handle this? And they're like, they stumbled over themselves. They had no idea how to answer my question. So I was like, you're not a legit prep center. You don't even know how to speak Amazon. If they don't speak Amazon, they don't, they don't know what they're doing. And if they say, oh, yeah, 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 we'll take care of everything for you. Don't, you know, things are good, too good to be true. They probably are. Ask them specific seller central questions and see if they get it. If they don't get it, you better run. Like, I'm just saying, you know, there's just certain I'll, people that I'll don't know. I'll put out there that I interviewed not that long ago, and I asked about bundles. And she said, yeah, we do bundles. Like, and I looked at their system. I'm like, that's not a bundle. That's a multi-pack. No, that's a bundle. I'm like, okay, they have no clue what my business model is, so I could never even think of hiring a company that doesn't get what I do. Because yeah. they're going to end up screwing something up and my customer is going to be the one that pays in the long run that I end up paying because I get returns, I get negative feedback, whatever. Yeah, and the, the communication cannot be overstated. Communication is so important. And ask them, how, what kind of system do they use? How are you going to input your items into how they will receive them? And how, do they, how are you going to communicate to them that, you know, you're ordering because we taught you how to do this, right? We taught you how to build a successful bundle from multiple vendors so that people aren't always copying off of you, right? That's the key. Um, and then how are you going to tell your prep center that, that, this bundle's coming, this item's coming from this company, this item's coming from this company, and this item's coming from this company, and the bundle is one, two, three, oh, and two of these. Happy hunting. Like, you have to have a place and a way to communicate, and that's what we love about our prep center is literally, <laughs> this is no joke. Like, Nathan and his wife and their team built their business, yes, but Nathan and I first got together, and we brainstormed once we kind of got a handle on this, like, how is this going to work? How are we going to put these pieces together? So literally, like, we helped him, Amy and I both. Like, at first, it was just me and Nathan talking, and she was like, you test it out first, so let me know how it goes, and then I'll get my hands in there. And then she helped came and build this, like, system of so different some things that we, so we all contributed, and that's why we love it so much is because we had a hand in creating what a bundle business model would look like from a prep center standpoint, and it works really well for us, and now we're, like, 100%, like, Oh, when we even think about having to process something at home, we're like, that's not worth it. I'm not doing it. <laughs> if I can't go to the prep center, it's not happening. There are, there are like one or two bundles that I will still bundle in house. And it is very rare. And it's usually only in Q4. And that just has to do with what it is and how I bundle it. But in general, 99.9% .9 of my stuff now goes to the prep center. It has been the biggest relief I actually had to do a five box shipment the other day to send in some of my Thanksgiving that I pulled back last year. I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm so spoiled because Nathan's doing this. I used to ship out of my house four days a week. And we're not talking little shipments. We're talking 15 to 20 boxes, guys. So they take care of all of that. I, can, I don't even know how many boxes of mine they ship out a day. I know that my product gets there. I can see what's moving. I can see how frequently they're shipping. I can see where the stuck points are. We have color coding and all sorts of systems in place so that we can have communication without actually having to physically talk to each other, which I think is huge. We still know what's going on without having to constantly pick up the phone and troubleshoot and problem solve. Yes, there are times when we have to do that. Usually they happen uh, when our brains aren't working the right way, but you know, sometimes it just happens and that happened here in my house and it happens there. But being able to be open and communicative and say, oh, this is what this means. I understand why you didn't understand that <laughs> because it's my speak versus how they comprehend it, how they respond to it, how they understand it. And if I can, if we can open up that line of communication, that stuff gets negated a lot easier. Now, prep center, what do you want to say? No, go ahead. 
Prep Center is only one of the ways that you can outsource in your Amazon business, guys. One, there are a lot of different ways. You've got image creation, you've got listings, you've got sourcing, you've got all sorts of things in your Amazon business that you can outsource. And going back to what Kristen said at the top of the show is it takes understanding the process step by step and explaining it like a 10 year old could do it. And you can do this with anything. It can be business related. It can be Amazon backend related. Um, all of your administrative tasks, all of those things that you can write down step by step by step. How do I do it today? And I will tell you one of the best parts about going through this process, outsourcing is number one. Number two is finding those holes, finding the places where you are losing money, losing time, missing steps that are going to cost you down the road. Um, yes, because of a process that I have in place, I found that a vendor had double entered a $4,000 order. Yeah. of a pre-order. So if I hadn't caught it on the front end, I would have had $8,000 of product land on my doorstep in three months and gone, uh, I don't need all this. And it would have been much more of a headache, but because of a process, I get to find those out now, but it's because I wrote down a process and my bookkeeper could follow the process to say, um, did you order this twice? Right. See, and that's the, that's the, one of the things. There's other ways to be hands off, and we can tell you, you know, the things that we're hands off. On. Did you just hear that? Amy has a bookkeeper because her bookkeeper has to enter in all of her stuff and all of her transactions, so she doesn't have to worry about it. She's not as numbers nerdy as I am, and I like to do my numbers because I like to see all of the things in the places. Um, but Amy's like, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do adult mommy homework or whatever that is. Like, <laughs> like adult math homework. I saw that on Facebook the other day. Someone said they were doing their taxes and she's like, their kids like, what are taxes? And she's like, mommy math homework. And I just lost it. I was like, that's so true. And I love that. I'm like, give me your math. But as long as it's not her taxes, she hands that off. Yeah, no, no, that's too complicated. S corps and this business and that business. No, no, I can't do all that. Um, but like the day to day or the accounting, I like to see all those things because I like to know where my numbers are. I like to know, you know, how my Q4 is doing and uh, we're excited about that. But that I get to little... know that and I don't have to do it. And that's what I love about having my bookkeeper in place is I get a cash flow report. I can go run it every single day. I know where everything stands and I don't have to do it because honestly, guys, when I didn't have a bookkeeper, I had no clue how my business was running because I was not as focused on that. I was focused on the prepping and the shipping and the sending items in because guess what guys, that's the fun part. Doing all of the back end administrative tasks, bookkeeping included, sales tax stuff included, is not, in my personal opinion, the fun stuff. My bookkeeper thinks doing QuickBooks is the most fun she has all the time. I'm like, okay, then you can do it because it's so not fun for me. She calls my vendors and pays all my bills. Like, I don't even have to think about- Can when she call that? and pay my bills too? I mean- <laughs> See? See? This is why outsourcing is, like, it's take things off your plate. I don't have to manage when bills are due. I don't have to manage how much money I have in my accounts. Do I have enough on my credit card to pay those? She's got all that managed, so she knows- she knows what order I use my credit cards in so that if one's maxed out, I can move on. Um, that happens a lot to me in Q4 because I buy everything on credit. I pay it off at the end of the month, but I love to get my miles, guys, because let me tell you, traveling is amazing when you don't have to pay for it. Amen, twice that. I love putting inventory on our venture card because then it's like, ooh, where can I fly for free? Where can I stay for free? And Airbnb counts and flying counts and a train counts and wherever you want to go. So we love paying for our travel with our you know, inventory points. Why not? Um, use that responsibly. We buy and literally I pay my card every day because we charge inventory all the time. So we're always paying it so that we can keep that balance running. But we're talking about how you can be hands off. And this last part of the section is not being overwhelmed with how to hire and when. Everyone's overwhelmed with what do I pay them? I'm not sure I have enough for them to do. What about taxes? What about insurance? What types of things can we hire out? We're not going into freak out mode. First of all, first and foremost, one of the easiest things that you can do is try a prep center. And that eliminates all of this stuff. You, you go through the prep center questions. You say, is this right for me? I want to talk with someone. Don't have that fear of picking up the phone. Remember, they want your business. They're not, they're, it's not like it's some pushy salesperson pushing you into something. You're calling them to say, what can you do for me? 
<laughs> and they say, for this fee, this is what we will do for you. So don't freak out about that and, and thinking like you have to be timid. It's like they're offering you a service and they're happy to collect your money for that service and you're happy to pay them. So to pick up that phone and just make that phone call or send that email or whatever it is, there's other things though. If you're not quite ready for that, what are the types of things that you could hire out? The, the answer to that is everything. And when I say everything, Amy, Amy talked earlier about delegating versus hiring out. It's similar. The delegate is more for your family and hiring is more for people outside your family. But you can literally hire the lawn care like I did this year because I was so tired of fighting with my teenagers about it. So I'm like, forget it. Your $20 for mowing the lawn is now going to a service because you guys spend too much time arguing about it. So outsource. You can outsource laundry. You can outsource a uh, shift and Instacart will grocery shop for you. I love them. Now, if they could come in and put it away and cook it, that would be amazing. <laughs> but um, at least half of it is hired out. There's so many things that you can hire out for people to do so they can free up your time so you're not thinking about the house cleaning or the, the grocery shopping or the lawn care or whatever. It doesn't necessarily have to be business related text, but eventually you're going to have to let go of the control. And you're going to have to hire someone, but first you've got to create that step-by-step -step process. Step-by-step -step is key. And yes, it's easy to go look at it at a higher level and say, these are the four things that I do. Start there and then work yourself down because I guarantee you guys in every single process that you do, whether it's doing the laundry or doing an Amazon listing, there are parts and pieces and decisions that you make and how you do things that are all up here that you just make that you don't necessarily recognize that you make. So some of the processes that we've outsourced for mommy income, I would write up processes and give them to Kristen to do because something that I always did. And then she'd say, um, I know about this because I see you do this, but somebody else coming in would have no idea what you're doing. So there were steps that I would miss that I would just jump over because my brain would just go there. And the somebody perfect way to test that too, like Amy was just saying, is that she would do things in mommy income that were like, you know, this is like her category. My category is over here because she's really great at that stuff. And I'm really bad at that stuff, but I had to be the guinea pig. So you guys have to have a guinea pig. So when you're talking about that, you're talking, that's what we talked about earlier. The 10, you know, the 10 year old process, right? You take whatever process you're doing and ask your husband or a teenage kid or the neighbor or your mother, somebody that is very unfamiliar and see if they can walk through your process and understand it. And if they get to a point where they're like, I don't get this, that's just where you need to add something in. So it doesn't mean you screwed up. It doesn't mean like, oh my gosh, this is never going to work. This is okay. I found a hole and I need to plug the hole. That's all it is. So it's like, okay, create and walk through your process. This can be done with anything that you do. Amy just talked about laundry. It's th think about it. We, we automatically do the laundry, but somehow, somewhere, sometimes someone taught us to do laundry. My dad, so that was we don't terrible. turn so that we don't turn our whites pink. <laughs> My dad was terrible. Everything went in the cold wash and he dumped the powder or whatever over the top of it. I'm like that. Now I know how wrong that is. And you know, we can talk all day about the right and the wrong way to do laundry. My way is the right way. Just saying. Um, I worked at a laundromat, so I feel like I, I'm allowed to say that out loud. Worked at a dry cleaners and laundromat for like three years. So um, Mrs. Lee, bless her heart, um, from, she was from Korea and literally she taught me the right way to do laundry. And, and my mother, of course, she, she did too, but I, I was more raised by my dad when I was younger and learned how to do laundry at 10 and everything went in the cold wash and all this stuff and then things came out and they were they were just all wrong. And so, um, you know, it's still a process. It's do this, A plus B equals C. You, you know, whatever your process is, you write that down. If you forget to tell someone that you got to put the laundry soap in as the water's filling up, then they're going to dump it on top and it's not going to get all, all up in there. It's going to get on the top part and not the bottom. You know, so whatever your process is, remember that you can't skip steps and you want to test it out on somebody to see if they can do it that way. And then that's where you find the leaky hole, you know, your leaky bucket. Remember, you're plugging the hole by doing that. It's not as hard as it seems to be able to create a process and then hand it off to someone else to try it. Yeah. So if you go to mommyincome.com slash team, it's our how to hire members, uh, team members workbook. And that is something that walks through some of the process, some of the questions to ask and things like that, that'll help you with that. But honestly, guys, the first step is that process I don't call it process improvement, but that process evaluation is looking at your processes and 
what's working, what's not working, but also going through and then having somebody test them for you. And then, cause then they can go, um, I'm stuck here because I don't know what the next step is. I, I'm queen of doing that. Like I have screenshots going down, explaining how to do something. And all of a sudden you're like, I don't know how you got from this screenshot to this screenshot. You missed a step. Um, so something that I just do is something that needs to be part of the conversation. Guys, we don't want you to get stuck in your business. If you want to grow and take your business to the next level, you can. It's time to let go. You're going to strangle your business if you have such a tight grip on everything instead of letting it grow. It's not you. If you've got a tight grip and you're micromanaging and you want to hold on to absolutely everything, your business cannot grow. If you can open up your hands and let parts and pieces of your business go, that all of a sudden you're going to see growth that you don't expect. Yes. Let me tell you something about that. See, from a self-proclaimed, like I'm not a control freak, but I'm stubborn. <laughs> and um, it's a little bit different. A control freak is just like, oh, I'll just take care of all of it. And I won't get any sleep because I have to make sure I have my little nitty gritty hands and everything. <clears throat> Someone else I know. <laughs> <laughs> However, I am very stubborn. And it takes me a long time to get to the place where I need that. And then I go, oh, I don't know what to do. I'm like, I want to do this thing and I don't want to do this thing anymore. But now like, I don't, I don't know what to do. I get overwhelmed just like you do. I get overwhelmed. I'm a self-proclaimed, like I'll just do it all because my dad taught me, God rest his soul, um, which I believe he was wrong. And I learned this over time, but he used to say, if you want something done right, do it yourself. Have you guys ever heard that? If you want something done right, do it yourself. And I say, Okay. I love my dad and he has passed away and I know that he's given me a lot of wisdom and I love him for that, but that's where I would stand up to him nowadays, my, my 38 year old self. And I would say, um, no, if you want something done right, teach someone else how to do it right. <laughs> that's all there is to it. That's my new advice. It's not do it yourself. It's teach everybody else your way. Cause that's the right. <laughs> so you want something done right, teach someone else how to do it right and then you'll have it done right. So, and then correct them if they don't do it. So, you know, it's just one of those things where we don't have to, like I, like I was just saying, we don't have to subscribe to someone else's imparted wisdom, even if it served us for a time. And as a growing business, I couldn't do everything myself and do it right. I was doing a lot of things wrong because I was trying to do too many things. So I thought if I just teach someone else how to do this correctly, then they can do it correctly and then I can do other things. <laughs> and then I can teach them those things to do correctly. So you, you can, you can change your way of thinking in life. You know, I was raised up that way and now I've changed to thinking, you know, you don't have to do it and you can hire people and it's not as hard, but you, they're only going to be as good as you teach them. And so they're going to learn your way. So document that process, write things down, figure out exactly how you do things and how you want things done and then hand it off to someone. And handing it off. I, I'll tell you guys, one of the best parts of handing it off is that freedom that you will feel. Now it doesn't come overnight because guess what? There's always challenges that come when you hand things off and you've got to be ready, ready for a slightly bumpy road in the beginning. But when all of a sudden that person is doing stuff with my virtual assistant handles all of my backend tasks, all I have to do is see the reimbursement notifications landing in my inbox. And I know Bernadette's been working and I didn't even have to think about asking Amazon for any of that stuff. She's taking care of all of it. I've got all my negative feedback taken care of. She's got it all. And it's been amazing. I love how that feels. You guys, you have to know how that feels. I, I wanted to challenge you all to hire something out so that you can go, yes. That feeling of yes, when someone else does something that you used to do and it used to take you a long time. Like every week, you guys have no idea what trends are. And if you come to the workshop, you might learn what trends are. And especially come next year, we're going to start teaching some more of our processes um, for what we do with wholesale bundles. But trends is something Amy and I came up with collectively because there was a bottleneck in our business. And we're like, we can't figure out how to keep up with a hundred replens. That's a lot of replens to come up with. And with that many replens, excuse me, versus um, seasonal and evergreen bundles, a system by which we can track those ASINs and figure out what needs to be reordered because things that need to be reordered, it's complicated. They need to be reordered from four different vendors sometimes. And that's, yeah, we're nuts and crazy, but guess what? We don't have any competition on those bundles. 
boom, mic drop, right? That's what we do here. We do wholesale bundles, but we had to create a system because there wasn't one that existed. So we created this thing called what we call trends and we take our trends and we put them in and then we have our, but guess who? We, we created the process first. We tested it. We tested it for like four weeks and then we're like, who else can do this? Cause we're not doing it anymore. Now that we have a process, who can we hand this to? Like we're, we're getting geeked about things that we can hand off nowadays. Okay. So you think about people who get addicted to tattoos, they get their first tattoo and then they can't stop with us. It's with outsourcing. We did it once and it keeps rolling. We keep wanting to add more outsourcing because guys, it frees us up to do other things. It frees us up to work on new, really cool things that we want to bring to you and teach you how to do. It allows us to spend more time with our kids, whether it be um, in a not good situation because of health or it's because we get to take them to the park and have fun with them. So freedom. And honestly, guys, what we want to see each and every one of you experience in your Amazon business is the freedom that it comes by being your own boss, not being stuck in a nine to five schedule, being able to have that freedom from the rat race. Yeah, and you know what, um, Barbara has a great question here. She says, if I'm from Georgia, how would it work to use a prep center in Michigan? Would it be cost effective versus having one closer to be? Now here's the answer to that. Um, prep centers are located all over the country, but so are your vendors. So here's a, here's a prime example. Our prep center happens to be here in Michigan. Um, that's just because of where it was, but it, I didn't choose it because it was Michigan. Most of my vendors are, a lot of them are West Coast. So I'm shipping from West Coast over to Michigan, not because, that was just because that's the best, best, I can't even talk. The best prep center for me and my business model is the one I'm using that happens to be located 30 minutes from my house or 30 or less from my house. But Amy, who is in Pennsylvania, uses the same prep center that I do and she ships from different vendors. So it's not because of your location because I'm not shipping things from Michigan to Michigan. I'm calling or sending, you know, POs to my vendors that are shipping from Nebraska and California and some people ship out of, of New York and some people ship from China and I'm having st all this stuff sent to the prep center. So it, it it's not necessarily not cost effective depending on where you're, you're ordering from. So if you're ordering from Target online and you're getting free shipping, it doesn't matter if it's going to Michigan or it's going to California. If you're getting free shipping, free shipping is free shipping. And I try to get free freight from most of my companies. They order a certain amount and I like to get free freight. Some of them don't offer that. But, um, you know, so it doesn't necessarily matter where your items are going. Um, and it, you know, I guess it could be, I would pick a prep center then if you're thinking cost effectively, if they don't offer free shipping at any of your vendors, I would try to pick a prep center that's closest to your vendor you order from the most, because I guess that would save you the most money in shipping. But I found out that even from California to Michigan, um, freight's about the same if you have to pay for it. I tend to order way up higher. Um, you know, so I get free freight, you know, it's always worth it to add a couple extra hundred bucks to my cart. So I don't have to pay a couple hundred bucks for freight. So, um, you know, it, it doesn't, I, I don't think that location is relevant enough to worry about it because vendors are going to be all over the place. And so depending on where your vendors are, if you want to be close to them, then find a prep center that's affordable, that's closer to your vendors, because that would save you money rather than closer to your house. That's not really going to matter much. The only time that it really matters to have a prep center that's close to you is if you want to do retail arbitrage to a prep center. Um, and we have seen people do that so that they can do their RA and they can then go and drop it off. But honestly, guys, if you're using a prep center, we're hoping that you're moving away from the retail arbitrage model because the best part about using a prep center is being completely hands off. I order product from a catalog or 20 and I ship it to my prep center and they bundle it and send it off. So I'm still able to do that ordering without having to go to the stores and physically do it. Oh yeah, I wanted to remind you guys, um, you know, we're coming to the end of the show here, but we have a couple more minutes, but I have got to remind you guys next week is so exciting. I can't even tell you. I actually am going to tell you. Next week is Mommy Income's birthday. Yes, we're turning four. Four years. We're turning four. It's so exciting. Um, and because Mommy's Income is turning four next week, we're doing a giveaway. So watch the social media. Um, watch the in, in, your inbox. Make sure that you're following our Facebook page um, and you're in our Facebook group because you're, we're going to do a giveaway. We're going to do several. We have some merch we want to give away. We have some t-shirts. We have some hoodies. 
and we have classes and courses um, like wholesale bundles. Anyone want a free wholesale bundles course? Because we're doing a giveaway. There's gonna be special instructions. So you wanna watch like baby tomorrow, look at social media and look at mommy income and see what the giveaway is going to entail. Because um, we want you to be a part, but it's also not just that, it's a ask us anything show next week. So nothing's off topic. We don't have a topic. We're just literally having this fun giveaway. We're going to talk about some fun things that happened in the past four years. And we're going to answer all of your Amazon questions next week. So if you have the weirdest, randomest Amazon question that's totally not to do with our topic, it doesn't matter. You bring your questions, we're going to answer them as much as we can. And if our show goes longer than an hour, it goes longer than an hour. Why? Because it's a birthday party. We're having a birthday. We are celebrating. Who's bringing cake? cake? Yes, bring me cake. <laughs> bring me cake balloons, hats, I don't know, you know, um, it, it's going to be a riot and we're excited to be able to just do a no agenda show. You guys bring the questions. You have that. You want to, you want to mommy income free class to give away. We are giving away class. You guys know we don't do this very often. Why? Because wholesale bundle system is so amazing. It will change your business and change your life if you put it into practice. So we just don't give it away. But this year, because of it's our birthday, you guys are getting all the gifts. And I just, I love birthdays. First of all, um, Mommy Income's birthday is technically on my birthday. Um, so that just makes it even more fun. Um, so we are excited for our birthday bash next week and celebrating four years of togetherness and bringing you guys awesome Amazon goodies. And we can't wait to give you all the presents. So make sure that you're here next week. Monday night live, please come live. If you're listening to this on the podcast and you know, you have like two seconds to get in here and live, come live. This is where all the fun happens, right? So of course, everyone's of course. ready to party. <laughs> yes, we're ready to party. We've been excited about planning this. Um, we're excited to have all of you guys join us live, ask your questions, throw them all at us. We are super excited to give that to you as a gift on our birthday. Um, because without you guys, we wouldn't be what we are today. You are an integral part of this community and growing mommy income so that we can touch more people. That brings me to my next favorite ask of you guys. We would love to have you. The best thing you can do to give back to us is to share what we're sharing with you with other people. Maybe it's a podcast episode. Maybe it's a YouTube video. Whatever it is, if you know somebody who's selling on Amazon you think would benefit from what we're teaching you, send along a link, send along a note, post it in a group, say, this is something I just learned. Come and check it out. And we love testimonials from our peeps. If you learn anything from our show, post it on our Facebook page, post it on our group. We want to give you guys shout outs. We're actually something that we're going to incorporate in the upcoming shows is we're just going to start shouting out people who are, you know, our fans that, that are here and they're learning and they're growing. We, we love celebrating with you. We sit here every week because we want you to enjoy the freedom and success that we have. That's why we teach you because you're like, you can have this. It ain't going to be easy. It ain't going to be cheap. It ain't going to be fun sometimes. I mean, most of the time it can be fun. But a lot of times, this is hard work, you guys. It is. And we're here to support you along the way. And we know that you're going to get to a place where you're like, I am a rock star. And we're, we want you to have rock star status. So um, please comment and share and like and tell us all. And, and your struggles, too. Bring your struggles. The struggle is real, you guys. We know this. So come to the Facebook group. Tell us what's going on celebrate your wins, no matter how big or small, tell us that, you know, you're, you're capitalizing you, that you took your one step and, um, definitely come party with us next week for our birthday bash. Cause we're super excited about that. Sign up for a workshop. The workshops are now open. We are coming to a city near you and we cannot wait to meet you. So please sign up for a workshop. Yep. So go to mommyincome.com work slash workshop if you are interested in going to one of the Confident Wholesale Bundlers workshops with us this it coming in 2019. Also, join our Facebook community. Make sure you're connected with us on social media. Head over to mommyincome.com slash join us, and we will let you into the Facebook group with the code word stop shipping. We would love to invite you there with your questions. And again, we're going to be answering your questions live next week. Bring them live to the show. We cannot wait to share our birthday with you. All right, you guys have an amazing week. Thanks for hanging out with us. Now stop shipping and start hiring a prep center. We'll see you next week on the Amazon Files. Have a great one, everyone. Bye.